Uh, sure. Why not? Nice bar you have here. With me, any bar where people don't spit on the floor is nice. But thanks. My name is Carla. Hi, Donald. Daniel. You guys from around here? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Let me guess. Um, I'm good at this. You work in the Pru selling insurance. Home and auto. No. We're doctors at St. Elysius. St. Elsewhere? I was forced to have my kid in that mortician's delight. Hey, hey, everybody! These two butchers work at St. Elsewhere. <laughs> Welcome to Cheers, Doctors Jekyll and Hyde. Who recommended this establishment? I overheard Ehrlich talking about it. You figured. <laughs> well, here you are. I've been looking all over for Pete's sake. Mm -hmm. Andreo said you had a bar near the commons. Next time, be more specific, will you? Sorry. Is Catherine all right? Yeah, she's resting comfortably. Blood pressure 110 over 80, and her pulse is 70. Ah, you divided like cells of bacteria. Scotching waters. What do you want? I think I'd like something light. Uh, maybe you could suggest an aperitif? What do I look like, a sommelier? Just pick a drink. Have you been taking this abuse all night? Let's see you do something about it. On second thought, I'll have an amaretto. <sighs> Catherine's echocardiogram shows significant left ventricular hypertrophy. Now, I've spoken to her, and I've scheduled surgery for tomorrow morning. I'd like a second opinion. Fine. Daniel, I've seen Catherine's chart. I agree with Mark. If or anyone else, you would too. We'll go ahead with the surgery. One amaretto. Wussy drink. You know, that reminds me, Donald. When we were at the old North Plaza, you can't joke about stuff like that. What's going on? I was doing Donald a favor by checking out a condo he was thinking of buying. Next thing I know, we're in the road company of La Caja Full. Selling a house at Wayland is one thing, but why give it up for a condominium? Have you seen his house lately? Crabgrass in the front, peeling paint, bad shingles. Have you seen a dermatologist? <laughs> I mean, a man's castle is a reflection of his mental state. Now, just a minute, Mark. Your place looks like something out of House Beautiful, right? You're no happier than I am. What's with it with you? Can't you take a little constructive criticism? But Donald has a point. On a day-to-day -day basis, you're always much testier than we are. Mm. Daniel, you're the only one I'd know who'd aggravate the doctor who's operating on your wife in the morning. Why are you drinking? One lousy amaretto for crying out loud. Oh, how was it seeing Dr. Dominion? <sighs> Great. You know, I thought my 50s would be smooth sailing. I'm still getting tossed around. It just doesn't seem fair. What? Well, like Stephen getting married. I thought you were thrilled. Daniel, he eloped. No wedding. No witty toasts at the reception. No fatherly pats on the back. I mean, Ellen was devastated. You know, everybody? Oh! I was tall, cool, foaming, and comes in a glass. That'd be my dinner. Set me up. Keep your shorts on. I'm working alone. Sam and uh, Coach went to the Celtics game, and Frazier took Diane to the costume ball at the Cyclorama. Everyone is Timmy and left. Hi, Norman. Oh, hello. Uh, of course, he helped me out here. If, uh, got hung up with this old geezer. Tell me that Vera just died or something. Roger. Dr. Arslander, haven't seen you since the 1040 of 82, sir. My former accountant, Norman Peterson, Dr. Yeah. Westfall, Dr. Craig. Hi. Looking at the brains behind Auslander, a medical corporation. Oh. And uh, we're awfully sorry about that last audit, sir. The IRS didn't buy declaring my six-year-old granddaughter as an employee. Oh, she recalls, sir, I did explain that might be a bit of a reach. As a taxpayer, I was ultimately responsible. Well, <laughs> Cliffy, uh, at least that Holstein deal in upstate New York worked, didn't it? Norm, you sold me a load of bull. I had to pay the government $17,000. Cliff, how's Vera doing? Any idea? Uh, uh, sick and vest. Uh, yep. Oh, well, I better... Uh, Wrap this to go, then. Nice to meet you. 
Another round? Please. What are you, Mary, a sipper? You know, today's women don't have any sense of gentility. I mean, I can't believe that Stephen is passing along the Craig name to some feminist bimbet. I thought you hadn't met your daughter. Huh? I haven't. That's not the point. What we're talking about here is a bond that exists between father and son. I mean, my father never told me he loved me, but I still realized that a bond existed. And I'll tell you when I knew it. D-Day, 1945. D-Day was 44. B-J-Day was 44. Well, whenever the hell it was. The only time my father ever hugged me. My pop wasn't overly affectionate. Geez, I got along great with my dad. Right up to the end, even when he couldn't recognize me. I didn't know that. I sat there and I talked to him. The man lying in that bed wasn't my father. There was none of the vitality, wisdom that I'd grown up with. I came to view him as another human being who needed my help. I couldn't do that. Mark, we do it every day at the hospital. He was the man who taught me to live by the rules, be responsible. Taught me how to ride a bicycle, catch a baseball. Two rites of passage I can't pass on to my own son. Living by the rules doesn't pay off, gentlemen. Ellen taught Stephen to ride a bike. I tried dealing with Tommy's situation the same way I dealt with my father's. Tommy's just a boy. Well, that's what tears me up inside, Daniel. Tommy has feelings, thoughts inside him that he can, he can never share with anyone. You know, a few nights ago, I had a dream about Tommy, and he was, he was articulating these extraordinary, complex ideas, and, and the dream was so incredible that, that when I woke up, I wrote it down. And in the morning, I looked at what I, I'd written. The only thing there was the word life. Well, it seems to me, despite Tommy's condition, you fought through the pain that it caused you, and you helped him. <clears throat> so, uh, you three fellows are of the uh, medical persuasion, eh? Huh? Yeah, because uh, we all turn our income to the generosity of the federal government, perhaps a little free attention is in order here. I got a pain in my arm now. It's probably uh, from slinging back all those mugs of beer all day long. No wonder the mail never gets delivered. Yeah, the uh, discomfort permeates my flexor capillarius, you see, then travels and zips right on through the extensor indicatus. Now, thereby, obviously, uh, causing me to put undue pressure on my brachial uh, radialis. Any hair on your mailbags? <laughs> Look, uh, we're here as civilians, so why don't you take your brachioradialis and walk away? Carla, tell Sammy until he gets a better class of clientele here, I'll be spitting my coaster at Bob's Yoldy Wildy Puppy. Daniel, I don't think I told you how sorry I am about George Wilder. He was foolhardy. Not in my eyes. He went to Africa knowing full well the government would kill him. How can a sane man walk so calmly into the mouth of a lion? Well, unlike uh, all of us in this room, except maybe that loudmouth barmaid, he was in control of his destiny. I mean, what do you have to worry about? The possibility of a plane crashing? I hate flying. Hate it. You don't go anywhere. No, but when we're taxiing out on the runway, I look out the window and I wonder how in the hell are they going to get all that metal and luggage off the ground? And I watch the stewardess, because I know that if anything goes wrong, she's going to be the first one to know. The people sitting around me having a wonderful time, they're calm, relaxed, I'm scared to death. Listen, Oliver London got his pilot's license last year and he did nothing but pester me to go up with him to get a bird's eye view of the Cape. So finally, I gave in. But for 30 minutes, a man who doesn't even have an Ivy League education is in control of my life. Barrel rolls, loop-de-loops, 
When we finally landed at Marlboro Airport, I dropped on my knees and kissed the terra firma. And then I threw up. <laughs> that Oliver London can get his pilot's license says something about air safety. If I were on a flight that ended before its destination, I'd walk away. I don't know how i do it, but I know I would. What if the plane crashed in the water? I'd swim ashore. Daniel, I've seen you in a bathing suit. Go down with dignity. <laughs> I gotta get up early. Hey, 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 where are you going? I brought you Shirley Temple. For your information, lady, I'm not drinking because I have a delicate operation to perform in the morning. Fitting someone for a body bag? Stiff her, but good. Don't worry about Catherine. That's a nice jacket. Is that worsted? Yes. It's good scotch. We have to enjoy the little pleasures, darling. The taste of things. The simplest breath. When my liver cancer was diagnosed, I savored every moment of every day for a while. Then I drifted back into complacency. Living has become once again a routine of dying patients and administrative foul-ups. Yep. You know, at the uh, set of services, I was listening to the rabbi talk about the plight of the Jews. And they'd had no rest or peace for so long. That's how I feel. Donald, what are you talking about? Making a change? I don't think that's what the rabbi had in mind. I should go away. Good. You haven't had a vacation for a long time. Daniel, I'm resigning as director of medicine. I'm leaving St. Alicia. Bags. <laughs> Look, uh, we're here as civilians, so why don't you take your brachio radialis and walk away? Carla, tell Sammy until he gets a bit of classic clientele here, I'll be spitting my coaster at Bob's Yoldy Wildy Puppy. Daniel, I don't think I told you how sorry I am about George Wilder. He was foolhardy. Not in my eyes. He went to Africa knowing full well the government would kill him. How can a sane man walk so calmly into the mouth of a lion? Well, unlike uh, all of us in this room, except maybe that loudmouth barmaid, he was in control of his destiny. I mean, what do you have to worry about? The possibility of a plane crashing? I hate flying. Hate it. You don't go anywhere. No, but when we're taxiing out on the runway, I look out the window and I wonder how in the hell are they going to get all that metal and luggage off the ground? And I watch the stewardess, because I know that if anything goes wrong, she's going to be the first one to know. The people sitting around me having a wonderful time, they're calm, relaxed, I'm scared to death. Listen, Oliver London got his pilot's license last year and he did nothing but pester me to go up with him to get a bird's eye view of the Cape. So finally, I gave in. But for 30 minutes, a man who doesn't even have an Ivy League education is in control of my life. Barrel rolls, loop-de-loops. When we finally landed at Marlboro Airport, I dropped on my knees and kissed the terra firma. And then I threw up. <laughs> that Oliver London can get his pilot's license says something about air safety. If I were on a flight that ended before its destination, I'd walk away. I don't know how I'd do it, but I know I would. What if the plane crashed in the water? I'd swim ashore. Daniel, I've seen you in a bathing suit. Go down with dignity. <laughs> I gotta get up early. Hey, 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 where are you going? I brought you Shirley Temple. For your information, lady, I'm not drinking because I have a delicate operation to perform in the morning. Fitting someone for a body bag? Stiff her, but good. Don't worry about Catherine. 
That's a nice jacket. Oh, is that worsted? Yes. It's good scotch. We have to enjoy the little pleasures, Tom. The taste of things. The simplest breath. When my liver cancer was diagnosed, So, uh, you three fellows are of the, uh, medical persuasion, huh? Yeah, well, because, uh, we all earn our income through the generosity of the federal government. Perhaps a little free attention is in order here. I got a pain in my arm now. It's probably uh, from slinging back all those mugs of beer all day long. No wonder the mail never gets delivered. Yeah, the, uh, discomfort permeates my flexor capillarius. See, then travels and zips right on through the extensor indicatus. Now, thereby, obviously, uh, causing me to put undue pressure on my brachial uh, radialis. Any hair on your mailbags? <laughs> Look, uh, we're here as civilians, so why don't you take your brachial radialis and walk away? Carla? Tell Sammy until he gets a better class of clientele here, I'll be spinning my coaster at Bob's Yoldy Wildy Puppy. Daniel, I don't think I told you how sorry I am about George Wilder. He was foolhardy. Not in my eyes. He went to Africa knowing full well the government would kill him. How can a sane man walk so calmly into the mouth of a lion? Well, unlike uh, all of us in this room, except maybe that loudmouth barmaid, he was in control of his destiny. I mean, what do you have to worry about? The possibility of a plane crashing? I hate flying. Hate it. You don't go anywhere. No, but when we're taxiing out on the runway, I look out the window, and I wonder how in the hell are they going to get all that metal and luggage off the ground? And I watch the stewardess, because I know that if anything goes wrong, she's going to be the first one to know. The people sitting around me having a wonderful time, they're calm, relaxed, I'm scared to death. Listen, Oliver London got his pilot's license last year, and he did nothing but pester me to go up with him to get a bird's eye view of the Cape. So finally, I gave in. So for 30 minutes, a man who doesn't even have an Ivy League education is in control of my life. Barrel rolls, loop-de-loops. When we finally landed at Marlboro Airport, I dropped on my knees, and kiss the terra firma. And then I threw up. <laughs> that Oliver London can get his pilot's license says something about air safety. If I were on a flight that ended before its destination, I'd walk away. I don't know how I do it, but I know I would. What if the plane crashed in the water? I'd swim ashore. Daniel, I've seen you in a bathing suit. Go down with dignity. <laughs> I gotta get up early. Hey, 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 where are you going? I brought you Shirley Temple. I hate flying. Hate it. You don't go anywhere. No, but when we're taxiing out on the runway, I look out the window, and I wonder how in the hell are they going to get all that metal and luggage off the ground? And I watch the stewardess, because I know that if anything goes wrong, she's going to be the first one to know. The people sitting around me having a wonderful time, they're calm, relaxed, I'm scared to death. Listen, Oliver London got his pilot's license last year, and he did nothing but pester me to go up with him to get a bird's eye view of the Cape. So finally, I gave in. So for 30 minutes, a man who doesn't even have an Ivy League education is in control of my life. Barrel rolls, loop-de-loops. When we finally landed at Marlboro Airport, I dropped on my knees and kissed the terra firma. And then I threw up. <laughs> that Oliver London can get his pilot's license says something about air safety. If I were on a flight that ended before its destination, I'd walk away. I don't know how I do it, but I know I would. What if the plane crashed in the water? I'd swim ashore. Daniel, I've seen you in a bathing suit. Go down with dignity. <laughs> I gotta get up early. Hey, 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 where are you going? I brought you Shirley Temple. For your information, lady, I'm not drinking because I have a delicate operation to perform in the morning. Fitting someone for a body bag? 
stiff hub, but good. Don't worry about Catherine. That's a nice jacket. Is that worsted? Yes. It's good scotch. We have to enjoy the little pleasures, Tom. The taste of things. The simplest breath. When my liver cancer was diagnosed, I savored every moment of every day for a while. Then I drifted back into complacency. Living has become, once again, a routine of dying patients and administrative foul-ups. Yep. You know, at the uh, set of services, I was listening to the rabbi talk about the plight of the Jews. And they'd had no rest or peace for so long. What are you talking about? Making a change? I don't think that's what the rabbi had in mind. I should go away. Good. You haven't had a vacation for a long time. Daniel, I'm resigning as director of medicine. I'm leaving St. Alicia's. 